Hello and welcome to episode 15 of Web Visions. I'm Shlomo. This is my co-host, Vic. Vic, how are you doing today? I know it's a late night over there, but I'm glad oh. you're here. Uh, thanks, Shlomo. We just had a great conversation with John Wilhelm, and it was really insightful and enlightening in some uh, yeah, John, ways. John, yeah, John's an interesting cat. Uh, we just recorded this thing where uh, he does a lot of work in Web3 gaming and represents and advises a bunch of companies in the space. We're going to listen to him talk about that, and we're really going to talk though, about the nitty-gritty of what exactly Web3 gaming is really is and where we could go with it it was a great conversation and uh make sure you because we may not be here at the end make sure you do what vic with our video click click subscribe <laughs> it's his favorite thing it's his favorite part so i gotta give it to him all right this yeah. is our conversation with john john's a great person and uh enjoy the combo welcome john woolen uh to the podcast uh, we are very excited to have you. We know you're heavily into Web3 gaming. I want to hear what you're kind of doing with that right now and kind of uh, where you think we're going to go with it. And if we have some time, we're going to see how AI fits into all of that as well, because we all know there's a million ways we could talk. So so let us all know where you're at, John. What do you do? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, we can, we can talk about all those things and maybe... AI too, I guess that's a thing, right? Anybody heard of that before? Is that you know, they tell me. They tell me. The youth is is super up on this. Yeah, well, first of all, super excited to be chatting with you guys. Uh, thank you so much, Vic and Shlomo. You know, what do I do right now? Right now, I'm super excited. My partner and I welcomed our, our baby just one year ago. So the main thing I'm excited about is a little human life that is in this world. And every single day, I get to hang out with her. And I get to look and think about the technology that's going to shape the world that she inhabits, that she works in, the creator economy and all these things. Um, and so with that, right now, the most exciting project that I am part of, we don't want to eat up this whole time talking about all this stuff, is working with these guys, freename.io, on their Web3 Play, which is the dot .gaming domain. They have done amazing work. And the partnerships that, even just as an advisor, I get to hear about and sort of be part of, is just it's it's mind numbing how much potential there is here for the platform of dot gaming. Um, you can certainly buy your own domains, and of course, I'm buying them up as, as fast as I can because I, I truly believe this is going to be the future. Um, but the interoperability, of course, that comes with the Web three, the plug and play to creating your own sort of web identity. Um, I believe that my daughter, for example, will rent items out that she gets in games like World of Warcraft or Axie Infinity to use an actual Web three game. Um, she'll rent those out to your kids and vice versa for crypto. And I think that will be a big part of how these kids pay for their college. Absolutely. Um, and before we get here, we are almost there already. In fact, all the kids who hate NFTs are just still buying uh, ghost skins on, uh, on uh, secondary markets all the time. That is still a business for a Seriously. bunch of people. You know, so <laughs> let's just be, let's just be real. This sort of thing is, it has been bubbling up. So how does this deal with, though, you're talking about dot gaming that you're advising to, right? So that's mm -hmm. that's really a domain level situation, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about? And yeah, then the, what the, else the gaming TLD. It? Okay. And yeah, so exactly? with that, oh, sorry, please go ahead. My, my excitement is it's too tangible. I hear you. Um, I don't know much about it in terms of what uh, they're doing. I do know some of the other, since Web3 has come, uh, there's been a lot of, uh, domain uh, specific entities happening. Some give you uh, tools to be able to build on or to or to at least interact in various ways with be it your wallet or the chain. And I'm just curious if dot gaming is a, a part of any of that. Yeah, increasingly centrally so. Uh, boy, I have to say it's been so exciting to work with the free name folks, uh, specifically Davide and Mattia, Eleonora, Chiara, and a handful of other really amazing people. They've taught me way more than I could have imagined I would be able to learn in just a couple of months. Um, so even that said, even with that preface, I still feel like I'm so nascent in this world, despite thinking about it and talking about it like all day long now. But, you know, there's unstoppable domains. That's one of the familiar ones that people might think of. That's a place where you can go and get a domain. It's a, it's a pretty fixed number of them, but they yep. supply the tools to build your site, all of these things where 
free name is a little different is you can even buy TLDs, top level domains that are emojis. In which mm -hmm. case we're really seeing that starting to explode. Um, and you can also attach royalties to any of the TLDs that you own so that you can actually monetize, uh, which we're really starting to see take off in ways that I, and I have limited perspective on this, but, and I'll leave this to, the, to those, to those guys to be able to comment on, but I'm blown away where that dot gaming comes into the mix is in the partnerships that they have with groups like Peach Worlds, which is this really incredible leading 3D website designer and their new DNS, their ability to basically make Web3 feel like native DNS. Um, that's really bridging this gap into the gaming world where, you know, if you're a Twitch streamer or if you want to be, you know, something like one in four kids right now in high school says they want to be a creator when they grow up and they're about to be grown up. And about mm -hmm. one in four of those folks say they want to work in games. So that's now one in 16 kids in, in, in the United States right now says they want to be a gaming streamer or creator. And those people all need an identity. They need a central place where it's not just about the link tree anymore. It's about where can I go to showcase and welcome you, Shlomo, welcome you, Vic, to my world. Immerse you in all these different places. I'm on Twitch. I'm on Kick. I'm streaming on TikTok. I'm streaming on Insta. I'm on YouTube Live now. There's services that are emerging all the time. How can I centralize those? And that's, and it, obviously I'm a believer because I'm going to talk about this all day long, but I believe that Freename will be very successful in creating that dot gaming central identity future. And then when we're moving into what exactly to you is Web3 gaming, right? Like how does that, like we just talked about skins and figuring out some sort of marketplace. Like people are playing with Axis Infinity, which you also just mentioned, but I wouldn't say it's a robust ecosystem happening over there at this point, sure. right? Like, so where do you see us kind of playing around in that? Well, it's totally the Wild West still, right? Like, which is why I love, I love investing in and, and sort of participating at this phase because once things are mature, it's a little bit like, I don't think you would have asked for this time with, you wouldn't have created this opportunity for us to talk together if I was just investing in .com domains. You'd be sure. like, oh, okay, like here's, here's one of many schmucks who's probably out here using GPT-4 to try to game this system. But instead, no, this is the Wild West still. So Web3, there's the interoperability. There's all of this blockchain that still has yet to be discovered. But you, Shlomo, actually hit on the number one reason why I'm focusing on Web3 gaming. Those two words combined. Gaming is a chronically underestimated and socially undervalued part of our society. We talk about gaming still, like I love using the word nerd. It's not even really appropriate anymore. Most people play games. About 70% of people actually play some sort of game. And in a world where 800,000 people a day start using the internet to game, of the 1.2 million people who actually start getting access to the internet every day, in a world where that's the case, increasingly those that don't game are the nerds in the back of the cafeteria where I sat in the... 90s. Um, but anyway, to come back to your question, why Web3 and gaming? Well, I think in a world where something's undervalued, that's where there's incredible value to be realized, especially for people who can see that and, and, and look forward. And with the Web3 piece, again, here we have an ill-defined, the word NFT. So NFT is still a four-letter word for a lot of people, right? They remember mm -hmm. the weird stuff that happened in 2020, early 21, kind of alongside the GameStop era. Like it was a weird chapter for all of us. And unless you made enough money to, you know, buy a few houses on GameStop, you probably lost a couple dollars on some weird NFT or who knows what. I believe that as these technologies and as these cultures within games and Web3 really start to solidify, there will be tremendous opportunity for those that were there and actually helping to be part of it beforehand. Because it's exactly what you said, Shlomo. We're already working in this space. We're grinding on WoW, World of Warcraft for items. We're trading CSGO skins. We're on Fortnite, many cases making things, even you call it UEFN or, or even Roblox. With the way we monetize this stuff, the way we actually find a way to create durable value through durable tokens on the chain, that I think is the future of, of ownership. Oh, sure. Um, you, you're you definitely preaching to the converted around here, especially totally. me and totally. Vic has been around at blockchain for about a decade. And I was lucky enough to run into him during uh, during lockdown. Ran into we have a mutual friend, and we got to meet over the internet and uh, got to really make some fun things together. Vic uh, looks like this, 
Awesome. Uh, this reminds me of one uh, idea which I had uh, not quite long ago. So I was thinking, like, uh, what are you going to do when I retire? Okay. And the ultimate answer is, I'm going to start gaming. So this looks <laughs> like pretty uh, much uh, good fit for my strategic goal. And uh, the only thing which I'm curious about is um, I didn't play game for, I would say, 20 years or something like 15 years, you know, like professionally play. Of course, uh, and uh, because it, you know, it's against uh, the free time, against all this stuff, I, I grown up and I lost all this, you know, like curiosity and uh, youth uh, rage. Yeah, so I'm not a gamer and I'm definitely not a Web3 gaming developer. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty much interested in what you said uh, regarding the opportunities of bringing these uh, ecosystems and infrastructure for gaming to uh, at this early stage. Why? Because uh, gaming at all is like fast, de fast development markets. You know, it's like 200 billions a year or something like this at this point. And if we're going to put uh, AAA titles aside, there are plenty of opportunities in crypto to proceed in, in this mm -hmm. stuff. My question is, what would you recommend for uh, software like developers like we are, uh, who good in the Web3 or crypto or blockchain, whatever, how we would uh, find ourselves in this Web3 gaming world, uh, which is still has uh, plenty of opportunities? Oh, uh, Vic, this is, this is the number one question I'm most excited to talk about. So you stop me when I've talked for too long, not if. <laughs> Here's the thing. There are two things going on. Really, I would actually put it at, at three. There's three things going on right now that make this the right time and that connects to your question around how can somebody who is a maybe a dev who's great on great in the blockchain, great in the Web3, but they don't maybe, maybe say you know nothing about games. Say you've never played a game before. Use the complete like way out here edge case. So this industry of games, the first thing of those three, this industry has taken body blow after body blow and uppercut after uppercut in the last 14 months. We've had between something like 50 to 60,000 people have been laid off. So about 8% of the entire industry has been laid off and most of which has not been replaced. Why? Well, immature financial practices on the part of leadership and a lack of accountability from the executive suite. That's just the way it is. A lot of these people got money more than they should have when it was basically free, spent irresponsibly, hired hopefully, and that cost a bunch of people their jobs. And I believe that should probably cost the executives their jobs, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, that means that there is this impossible amount of talent up there in the air right now, creating, engaging, founding studios faster than I can keep my, my eyes open. And that's just my tiny keyhole I look through on LinkedIn largely. But here's the second piece. These layoffs have disproportionately affected the historically underrepresented, right? So these are largely communities of color. These are female identifying and presenting people. These are people who maybe have visual or non-visual disabilities. And now that also happens to reflect the largest growing demographics for users. So I want to say that again, because this is not going to make any sense until we talk about it. The people that have been most laid off and not, not only, I'm not saying this is only, disproportionately affected and have now been laid off more than others are the exact same people who are reflected in the communities that are adopting and spending faster than anybody else. So Agreed. if that's not a market opportunity, Agreed. I don't know what is, right? right? Like, And these are the people who understand how to make something for those people. And so that's that's the second of those, those two things. And third is nobody knows what the hell's going on yet, right? And so nobody's created a really great Web3 game. So you have all this creative energy and all these, like yourselves, brilliant people in the Web3 space. And yeah, Axie Infinity is pretty, pretty good. I really like it. And there's a few other Web3 games that are really starting to pick up. But there is no Fortnite for Web3 yet. Right? There's no World of right. Warcraft for Web3. And by, that, of, by, oh, that, by that, when we say there's no uh, World of Warcraft or uh, Fortnite for Web3, Honestly, uh, I believe like what we all should be doing is about Web 2.6, 2.7 at this point, not Web 3 per se. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's no reason for a major company like Fortnite, which even though they're letting go people, make 
a pu- they're a public company. They do they do fine that they cannot have digital ownership of skins and uh, weapons for their for their users who could sell them on the secondary. There's no reason for them not to want to do that. People would buy more skins from them that are original. Provenance would be a part of it. These are things I definitely believe that uh, can be put into to uh, Web2 gaming situations. Um, yeah. Sony just has to embrace these sort of things, right? Like if I was Xbox right now where there, you know, people in their community is scared for them stopping exclusivity on their platform, I would totally open up digital ownership to keep them on the platform. Because why wouldn't they want to say, because the gaming industry, because of where they're at, is actually doing the opposite. No one's owning discs anymore, which is fine. But we're moving into a digital ownership situation. And when you talk about things like Xbox, they already change what games are in your library, right? From what we're free from, let's say, your monthly or whatnot. So digital ownership in terms of what we're talking about is actually... Uh, the next step of empowering customers, right? Like that's that's how I come from it, right? So it'll be interesting if they could like kind of figure out that, hey, can we have a digital uh, item, a skin that they're going to sell in the secondary market where I, the company, is barely going to make a profit off it? Mm-hmm. That's not an issue, right? Movement, attention of, of the coin, of their skins, of the value and use of button mashing in general, of attention in general is what drives Web two already and gets intentionalized in an economic way in Web three, and that's where I think mm-hmm. gaming needs to start with it right now. That's my diatribe. Well, that that intentionalization, which is uh, I absolutely love that word, Shlomo. That's my first time hearing that, and not my last time saying it because I love that phrase or that that word in a phrase. And I think if we if we apply that back to your question, Vic, around Web3, what does that mean in the dot gaming space? You know, their free name, and they'll they'll probably you know send me a couple emails about sharing this. There's a partnership that's in the works right now to where the right out of the box solution for somebody, they get their web gaming, they get their web three dot gaming domain. Let's call it Shlomo. Your name's fun to say. So I'm just gonna say Shlomo dot gaming. Um, boom, you sign up, you've got your web identity right there. Your web three identity is built in. It's a template that you build into this beautiful 3D site, but your wallet's right there. You can actually have, if you feel so inclined to do email and teleconferencing through video calls and things, though I don't think that's the greatest value proposition. But what I do think is that with your identity being irrevocably yours, which of course it is, and there's no up, there's no updating, there's no renewal fees. Like you see, if you, you know, sleep through it, you forgot to hit the auto renew button, somebody can't buy your domain out from under you unless you sell it to them on purpose. But here's the thing. In the future, I do believe that intentionality is going to be really monetized in the form of your dot gaming domain, for example, will be your Etsy shop for the skins that you make. And if Etsy can find a way to monetize my macrame, I don't actually make macrame, otherwise just whatever. If they can monetize my macrame, they can monetize your Vic ability to make awesome Fortnite skins and CSGO weapons and so on and so forth. So long as those entities find a way to, of course, take a cut that's worth it for them, which is, hey, this is all software. This is all SaaS. This is imaginary stuff, right? They can figure it out. So I, Shalom, I, I truly believe that one one of these days we might open up and see that you know Epic was one of the first to get on board. And who knows? At that point... I'm going to be real glad I'm John dot gaming. I'll put that, put it that way. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I have a question. Like, um, so I see that, uh, if you are, um, not a ga- uh, game studio, you know, because game development is a different part of development, uh, not we, what we get used to, um, what are opportunities in infrastructure to help all those things strive, uh, you see right now, what would you recommend to focus on? Because this is what we can do, you know, like uh, developers. What do you see? Where do you see these opportunities for for a future? Like, because the gaming, the gaming is uh, actually DNS stuff and TL, I mean, domain name service, which is a service for creators. Bingo. You know, there's, um, if you look toward what is happening at A16Z, so Anderson Horowitz, which is their Games Fund one. If you look at Sharuk Partners, which is 
to my knowledge, the biggest games fund. It's another five hundred million dollars, and or or so, up or down, out of the Middle East. They're actually not only looking at the, to your point, sort of front end, how the consumer gets access. They are really thinking about how the the infrastructure, the payment systems, how all of this stuff works. And I would say the 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 systems that are most exciting for me, like uh, from a partnership standpoint, like who's who's creating these like crazy crazy things. I would I would really actually look towards partnerships. Uh, I'm sorry, payment systems. So the intermediaries, the people that are that are actually uh, Tapadia, I believe, is one of those. No, 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 Tapalti. That's how that's the the correct pronunciation, Tapalti, which is just an awesome, basically one of the key cornerstones of Web three payments. There's not going to be a lot of PayPal's Web three at first, right? It's going to be just like you know Elon and others made their money there right out of the gates. I do think that the complexity of processing those payments and, and actually doing it in a way that's that's compliant and trustworthy, that's where I would look, just kind of like thinking right away. People who are building really great websites, the ability to just do a plug and play, because right now Web3 web design is a little it's a little strange. Like I haven't really seen anybody oh, who's totally nailing. Yeah, like right, it's still Wild West-ish. Um, I got to say, though, uh, one thing... Uh... Uh, I guess I'm going to some conference in Austin in a couple months uh, where uh, PayPal's coin, I want to say it's like dollar sign psyop, but I know that's actually not. I'm just like making dyslexic mix of the words. I forget what their coin is, but I guess they're just about to launch their token that we could yeah. use in the app. That's about all I know about it. I don't know much. Um, you know, one thing I have seen is when people with money stop talking about something, it's because they started spending on it. And there you go. Like when these big entities are, are now kind of, you see the the tide kind of go out on Web3 a little bit right now. That's where I saw that a couple of months ago. And that's, I'm speaking only for myself. I'm not making financial recommendations for anybody. That's when I saw, hey, this might be the time to really get involved. And I've been blown away and very, very, very glad to have been involved even so far. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So... Just to sum up, I want to make sure we get, you know, this all kind of out there. How does now this tie into the hipness of AI, where I definitely believe there's some low-hanging fruit and some great companies being made in gaming and AI, right? Like there's there's one I'm, I'm I wouldn't say I've used any of these products because I am not a developer of games, but uh, conceptually, I like the concept of these companies and saw them coming i was excited for them to come like there's a company that centers on npc creation yeah for for games like i love fallout and i already love the randomness of of interactions and dialogue and those games take a lot of time to make and ai could definitely help uh stream that uh, streamline that and it just creates that that uh character dialogue for all your npcs for your game i'm totally into that for ai Great idea, by the way. This is a really exciting idea. Right. I wish I came up with it. Um, <laughs> well, I got one for you, Shlomo, that you can say you came up with, or at least Please. maybe took forward. So one of the most, you know, sometimes you have a conversation and you kind of wake up at like three o'clock in the morning the day after and you're like, what did I just see happen? And I'm not saying it's because your one-year-old uh, has <laughs> rolled over on their pacifier again. No, no, this was because of a, a conversation I had not long ago. This is a podcast that is yet to be actually published. And they asked that we don't even disclose anything about it until then. So I'm just, this is, a, if anything, an anonymous seed. Here's the thing. NPC, AI, essentially gen AI creating narrative storyline. So the hard part is if one NPC is over here telling a story, what happens over here? If, if anybody here has played Baldur's Gate 3, which is, in my opinion, potentially the best game ever made. Whoa. Full stop. Yes, Whoa. that is right. The amount of complexity <laughs> that Larian Studios, I mean, they've won everything that Baldur, pretty much everything Baldur's Gate has been associated with this year for good reason. The level of complexity and ability for that, that system to understand what's happening within itself is mind numbing. But if you think about the complexity that goes into, if even one NPC is its own operating set of variables, it, it's orders of magnitude that ripples out across the whole set of stories. So the, the actual processing power necessary for Gen AI to be meaningfully in, 
to, to for Gen AI to make a game that you're in is is mind numbing. Like AWS, somewhere there's an AWS executive that's like, yes, yes, please come and come and take it. But here's the thing. There's a middle ground. And here's Shlomo, that idea, if anybody's interested. It's the idea of character mm -hmm. perpetuation, player character perpetuation, right? So mm -hmm. we can all, we've all probably messed around with GPT-4, 3.5 Turbo enough to, to kind of teach it our voice. There's plenty. I mean, you can literally actually teach it your voice if you're using the right software like Descript and others. Now, if you take that same methodology and you apply it to it watching you play and watching you communicate, Take a game like World of Warcraft, super high engagement. The average player who's playing meaningfully end game content is probably playing 30 to 40 hours a week. A decent LLM can learn a lot about you in 30 to 40 hours a week. Hell, it can learn a lot about you in 20 minutes. You give it that much data and it can be you. And so you could actually be when you're not. And that would allow you to maybe, there's implications as to like fairness and access to things. But look, you have to set out a raid no longer is it like, oh, sorry, other, you know, 19 people. It looks like we're not doing this thing. Nope. Autopilot. And there you go. Right. Bingo. I was thinking about this idea for, I would say, four years now. Uh, and it's uh, quite, quite uh, hard to implement, though, due to processing power required. But uh, it's a cool idea. The only thing which um, confused me is uh, the application like the fairness and all that stuff. Uh, because actually, you know, there are pl plenty of <clears throat> uh, good results in this area. And you think uh, this is uh, interesting for gamers? Yeah, and here's the thing. There's like certain uh, dark corners of games that I really enjoy talking to. I a while ago got pretty fascinated with this boosting economy. I got some spam email about how like, oh, like we'll, we'll go run your character for you through what is currently the end game content called a mirror drill on WoW. And yes, I play World of Warcraft. And yes, I play a Frost Mage. And yes, that's the best decision. Also, look <laughs> like, oh, if you're not Horde, why are you trying? Anyway, back to your question. I, I got this email and I was like, this is weird. So I went, I looked and I, I found that for about a hundred bucks, which is not a small amount of money, but for about a hundred bucks, these people would, would either log into my account or just play alongside me. And they would basically kite me through whatever I wanted. And I would get access to the items that I wanted and I wouldn't have to play it to chant. I mean, the only chance then is that something drops. If it drops, it's mine. So I chatted with them ad nauseum and I ended up doing a couple of Zoom calls with them to just, I was just curious about how their model works. They were extremely open. This is the Game Boost groups, by the way. Game Boost, uh, I think it's gameboost.com. It's probably it. That's their name is Game Boost. Um, and they were super open, shared with me. Here's the thing, going back to your question, Vic. With, is there a value proposition for, for gamers in this whole like player continuation or whatever you want to call it? My answer is a very emphatic yes, because the amount of money that people will spend, you could spend easily a thousand bucks right now for you to just go and come back and you got all the items that you wanted that you were going to spend a month grinding for it actually makes a lot of sense so if instead of a sort of secondary gray market making that money if the actual primary creator or even in a ugc environment somebody who's like sitting next yep. to you not mysteriously somewhere else someone's going to monetize that well and and when they do, it's gonna it's gonna be really profitable, really good. By the way, those I mean, game boost people are amazing. Game boost, if you're listening, thank you. You guys are rad. I will check them out. This ties into bots in the end. I mean, Web three and gaming is, and AI, the uh, the the connection in that Venn diagram of three circles is mm. bots. That is the thing Damn. that ties all three together. And I know it's a nasty word right now. Because people are, you know, people see negative on the internet before they say positive. And uh, we've had positive bots in our lives already. One thing like I was early chat bots, right? When we were actually having to script these ourselves only like seven years ago, right? So um, yeah. now that we don't have to do that sort of scripting and such, bots are incredibly important in gaming to me where for the exact thing that you're saying, wow, it's a 24-hour cycle. 
Um, if we're talking about uh, Web3 gaming, gaming, I believe, will be on a 24-hour cycle as well um, because that's what you have with perpetually online games. <laughs> and uh, I'm just very bullish in that sort of thing. Um, we are getting we are a little past our time with you, my friend. I want to make sure we, we, uh, we take care of you. John, give us some links that people could find you at. Yeah, the number one link I would hope that everybody goes to is gamesforlove.org. That's the nonprofit that I volunteer with. We put video games into children's hospitals so that we can replace pain with play. And we see incredible Ooh. health outcomes when those doctors integrate distraction therapy and the ability to stay connected with, with families for these kids. So gamesforlove.org. We're always looking for volunteers. We're at every convention that you're going to be at if you're going to conventions. And we're excited to see you come hang out with us. Uh, my LinkedIn is just my name right there. Uh, that's where I do most of my social stuff, content creation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please come, come over, come hang out. Uh, we'll post comp content almost, uh, almost daily. And the last commentary I'll add is gaming is something that we don't do enough of. And I truly believe that the more we game, the more we can connect and mental health, these bots that you're talking about Shlomo, one day we'll be able to step into a world of supportive play that is not some terribly toxic lobby yelling terrible racist sexist things but instead we'll be able to step into a supportive place that understands us that accepts us no matter who we are or how we walk or how we look or speak and that's a world that i'm excited about because everybody gets to play more belong more and be healthier so that's that's my there's my soapbox can you end any better than that john i'm told we are going to be at gdc at the same time uh, yes. you me, you and me uh, we will get together I'm an old San Franciscan, um, and so I would hope to meet for a bite or a cup or whatever in a couple We're gonna of We're going to make friendship bracelets, Shlomo. I'm excited about it. Let's do done it. And done and done. Done and done. And uh, thank you again for joining us, episode 15 with John Mulheim. And uh, thank you very much. Vic, you want to say anything less? Thank you very much, John. It was really an insightful and amazing conversation. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Vic. Shlomo, it's been a wonderful one. Thank you so much. Much love. Thank you.